the Colorado Avalanche pull off a very hard fought and gutsy win over the Vancouver Canucks thanks to two goals by Ryan Johansson. You heard me right. Two goals from Ryan Johansson. You are now entering the Twilight Zone, also known as the Locked On Avalanche podcast, coming at you. Your Locked On Avalanche, your daily podcast on the Colorado Avalanche. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody, welcome to the Locked On Avalanche podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Chris Maselli. With me, as always, is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. Thank you for tuning in, making it your first listen of the day. Always appreciated. Make sure you're following us on our social media outlets, LLP and underscore Avalanche on Twitter, X, Locked On Avalanche on Instagram and threads, questions, comments, concerns, and opinions, Locked On Avalanche at gmail.com. And follow us on our YouTube channel. Hit subscribe. Get notified when a new show goes live. Be sure you are subscribed to our subtext as well. Link to that's in the show notes below. And when you do, you chat with Kyle and I one-on-one. And we get your thoughts and opinions on everything Avalanche, which we share on this very podcast. Uh, all right, sir. Let's get into it. Avalanche with a, like I said in the beginning, very gutsy, hard-fought, not perfect but uh you know then again i don't know if you're gonna have a perfect game going up against a a team like this because they will disrupt you and you saw that uh but the abs did what they needed to do and pull out a three to one win over vancouver and send vancouver reeling a little bit which is is nice to see see other teams can do that too avalanche fans uh so a three game losing streak for the for the canucks overall what's your thoughts on the game and honestly, Vancouver is not the only one reeling from that debacle that we talked about in the Minnesota Vancouver game. Minnesota also lost as well. So mm-hmm. nobody lo- left that game unscathed. But <laughs> it was a great, gritty. We talked about playoff feel. That game Definitely. had playoff feel. It was it was like a heavyweight fight. It wasn't extreme. It wasn't crazy. It wasn't chippy. There was some weird things going on here and there. But you had, well, when it comes to the stat lines, we'll talk about two of those players in the two upcoming segments um, Mm. that we usually don't talk about in such a high regard. Um, Yes, the power play was invisible. That's Avalanche hockey, baby. The Uh, faceoffs look atrocious. That's Avalanche hockey, baby. But (laughs) it's to see two other players rise to the occasion and Nathan McKinnon keep his streak going with like 20 seconds left that was mm. beautiful so mm. it was it was all in all a great night exactly what you want going into a detroit game which could also be kind of tricky but this is what you want to see the avalanche are putting things together and putting together a complete 60 minute game yeah and i'll get to you know some things that obviously still need work on but i don't want to start with that uh because I, i'd rather start with how this game started which was maybe their best opening five, six minutes to a game yet this year. Um, and then what happened, and, and again, you say this all the time, that's the beauty of hockey is, you know, you saw Vancouver get their legs. Vancouver was, they were just outplayed in, in the first five minutes and the Avalanche had nothing to show for it. And then what happens, Vancouver, I don't want to say starts tilting the ice, but just started to even out the ice and they get a little bit of a odd man rush or not even an odd man rush. They just had guys positioned better than the Avs defenders were positioned. And there's a goal. And I know it's the first goal of the game and there's a lot of game left to go, but you just in the back of my mind, I was like, God, is that is that how this game is going to go? Because you got a, a great goalie on the other side. And getting anything by him is going to be a challenge. And you saw that. You saw, like, both goalies were were really fantastic. And you mentioned the Avs power play. I, again, I didn't think it was bad. They just yeah. don't have anything to show for it in terms of a goal. So, I mean, it, 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 we always talk about how the Avalanche, their penalty kill is has been good this year, numbers-wise, but they don't pressure teams. They don't make it difficult for teams to come into the zone. 
that's what Vancouver did. For the first time, I think, I can't remember when, the Avalanche had the easiest zone egg entries on the power play. And that helped them because they they could just really set up and, and they were moving the puck really at will. They had some really good chances. I thought that I thought the power play once again looked okay to good. And once again, you just have a goose egg, which man, just get one of those, and then this game is over long before Arturi Lekanen puts in an empty netter. And see, you were talking about zone entries on the power play. Another beautiful thing that I love to see, and it's it's one of these moments that we're going to hang in a museum forever. Um, <laughs> Sam Gerrard's penalty kill uh, exit. Th- it, that gritty, just extra play, that slight hesitation just to wait for that player to move out of the way just enough to for him to properly kill off that penalty and clear the puck. And you saw Jack Johnson reward him with a little like bucket tap, like to see the defense play a much cleaner game. Granted, like I know you can pick and choose like your your defenseman of the week that you don't like and probably have a case, but all together, top to bottom, the defense looked good. There were the mistakes were cleaned up. It was a it looked like the beginning of the season, Colorado Avalanche defense. And this is what you want to see. It's a beautiful thing to see. And I loved seeing players diving for pucks, blocking shots, saving goals. Like that extra effort. That's that's what's been missing for quite some time. To see that come back against Vancouver was a very promising sign. And you had two goals from Ryan Johansson. Now it, it, Say it is again not, for the people in the back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it has it's no secret. It has not gone the way that anybody has thought that it was going to go for Ryan Johansson and the Colorado Avalanche. And how many games has it been since his last last goal? Uh, they oh, said it on, on the on the on the broadcast, and I kind of tuned it out just because like I don't I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear it right now because he scored. Let's just enjoy it. 84 years. Yeah. <laughs> um it, it's been it's been a very long time since he's scored a goal. Um, and early in, I think it was their their. You go ahead. When? December 29th. There you go. So, um, I think it was their first power play when the second unit was out there. So there's only a few seconds left to go. Obviously, he's got the puck. And how I was saying, you know, Vancouver <clears throat> doesn't really pressure you too much. Uh, they kind of have a. a, a a strategy like the abs do on, on a penalty kill where they're just more concerned about positioning than really pressuring you. And Ryan Johansson had the puck all by himself. And he's kind of skating slowly back towards the blue line. And the puck just rolls off his, his, his stick and it ex- exits the zone. And that ended the, the power play. And you're like, Oh man, th- this guy just can't do anything right this year. And this was obviously before those those two goals. So it was, and I know that that's that's minor, but for the way that the season has gone for him, it's like, dude, you can't even keep the puck when nobody is pressuring you. You can't even keep the the puck in the the, the offensive zone during a power play, and and that could have been just another thing to add to the arsenal for for Ryan Johansson just to be like, I can't do anything right this year. But give him credit for sticking with it and getting not one but two goals. And in a game where you you really kind of felt like goals are going to be tough to come by, they were massive and they were meaningful and they were timely and they were needed. It wasn't the you know it, he didn't get the empty netter at the end of the game. It was the his two goals mattered the most. And and we talked about, it's something we mentioned with the power play. Things are looking good, but nothing's on the scoreboard to show for it. Ryan Johansson has quietly been improving his game slowly. He's been getting better and better. He's been getting better with the face-offs, his positioning. He's been noticeable. He's been there. And like that that play you mentioned where it just kind of rolls off his stick, you could see the celebration, like we mentioned with Sam Gerrard's puck clearing earlier with Jack Johnson. You could see the celebration with his teammates when Raijo got that first one. It was it was elation. Like it, it felt like 
Raijo was rewarded for finally putting in the work, finally getting things together, and it's starting to pay off for him. And on that second goal, it, it was like he won game 82. Like this is, you could really see everybody celebrating with him. So maybe this is a, I mean, Raijo's older. He's been in the same system for a long time. So maybe it's taken him a minute to adjust to the speed of the Colorado Avalanche and how they do things. And this isn't Nashville. This is Colorado. We do things a little bit differently here. And maybe this is him acclimating to a new chapter. Hey, honestly, this is the best time to find your game right now before the trade deadline and going forward into the playoffs. So if this is what Raijo is going to look like from now on, another new wrinkle in Avalanche depth. I'm not going there yet he, he he had a good game um you you need this you, this needs to be a consistent yep. ryan johansson so good job me you know i hope it's one of those things that that turns his season around but we're kind of late in the season for ryan johansson to to finally show up i'm glad he did and i'm glad he did against vancouver of all teams, one of the best teams in the league. So thank you for that. I am, I, I don't want to say I'm like, I'm already moving on from it, but I'm, I'm now I'm turning my, my attention to Detroit and be like, do that again, man, because that's what this team needs. And, and I know that's, you know, I, I don't think I'm putting any unwanted pressure on him because he's a veteran. He's been around. He knows that this game is already over with and people are going to be looking on to the next one. So great job. That's what we've been wanting from you. Do it again. Um, but there, there, you know, things like the puck just going off of his stick has been his season. We'll see what happens. And if nothing else, maybe that just maybe just upped his trade value for a little bit. If the Avalanche are still entertaining that, so um, all right, more to talk about with this game. Obviously, uh, Alexander Georgiev I thought was great, and he needed to make some sprawling saves, which he actually did in this game. So, um, all right, let's. Take our first break and uh, more to get to between this game with the Avalanche and the Vancouver Canucks. First, let's hear from Indeed. And we're driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. So don't search, match with Indeed. And if you need to hire, you got to go with Indeed because Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast to ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employer, employers agree that Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites according to recent Indeed data. So join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast and listeners of this show, Locked on Avalanche, will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your job more visibility at Indeed.com slash Locked On. So just go to Indeed.com slash Locked On right now and support Locked On Avalanche by saying you heard about Indeed on this very podcast. That's Indeed.com slash Locked On. Terms and conditions apply. If you need to hire, then you need Indeed. Also brought to you by FanDuel, and you can get buckets with your first bet at FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get a $150 credit of bonus bets with any $5 bet. That's $150 bucks in bonus bets if your bet wins, and you can bet on all your favorite NBA and NHL players with teams like Quick Bets or excuse me, and teams with with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and so much more. So just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. That is FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NBA. All right, Nathan McKinnon uh, continues his point streak. It came down to the, well, the, the home point streak. Uh, came down to the wire there empty net and he cross ice pass to uh Terry Lekkinen in the neutral zone who puts home the the game not the game winner but you know the the nail in the coffin so to speak and that makes it the three to one final score but uh it was it was a little I mean he was getting shots he had 
Did he end up with, with double digit shots on goal? Let me see. I know he had eight at one point. Yeah, he did. He had 10 shots on goal. Yep. So not for a lack of trying. And I thought they were pretty good looks. You had those power plays where he was getting looks. Um, again, with with Vancouver playing the style that they do, I thought that cross ice pass to to McKinnon or excuse me to uh Rantanen was coming for you know the the one timer on the power play, just nothing materialized, but Hey, it's a greasy one, but it counts, and and we continue, so we can talk about this for a little while longer, anyway. Yeah, and yesterday on Locked Out Avalanche, we talked about the possibility of Nathan McKinnon. When does it end? Like dream scenarios, we talked about it with everybody on subtext. And honestly, up until about thirty seconds left in the game, I was making my peace with it. I was like, "Well, <laughs> yeah. it's been a good run. It's been wonderful, Nate. Let's 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 start the next streak." But for him to get it, that was nice. And he did it, of course, in an unselfish way. I mean, it's an empty net. You could just turn just a little bit and take it yourself. Yeah. Handle business. You're putting your streak in the hands of Arturi Lekkanen. That's a that's kind of a big moment. Yeah. Arturi could have just took it and killed the clock. You know, hockey IQ in that moment, not risk an icing. Or, it's for Nathan McKinnon to also be selfless in that moment was also a big deal. But hey. The streak's still alive, baby. If if the streak ends and the Avalanche win, it's a little bit you can you can kind of accept that. But if it's a you know a one two punch where you know he doesn't get it and they lose, um, th- that will be a little bit more tough to swallow. Yeah, you know if, if and when when that time comes. Because it's one of those things that even win or loss, as long as that streak's going, you have something to cheer for and look forward to with the next home game. Which right. I mean, right. the record there's it's twenty one and five at home. So I mean, that's that's nice. Yeah. But the home streak is a, a little cherry on top. It is absolutely. Um, a couple things. One of the things you mentioned earlier was you know the game was a little bit chippy, but I I, I didn't feel like anything ever went overboard. No, like I was fine with the level of chippiness. You know what I mean? Like when you just had the stoppages and you get a couple, you know, paws in the face or or whatever the case may be. But I didn't I think both teams understood the importance of this game and neither one of them was going to do something stupid and commit a stupid penalty. So they just didn't cross the line. And I, I like seeing that. I like seeing guys stand up for stick up for, you know, one of their players, but not go overboard. Or stick up for their goalie um, if you know there's one maybe one too many whacks going up, but not go overboard. So uh, you like seeing that because you know how important it is for both of these teams to get these points. And uh, credit put to both of them for nobody on, the, on either team doing anything dumb. It's an incredible thing that one game against the Arizona Coyotes makes the Vancouver Canucks feel like a professional hockey team, and that was a professional hockey game because Arizona yeah. will goon it up and they scrap it up and they get nasty. And they get physical. But this was physical at points, but there was nothing that felt like it was meant to be a competitive advantage or create a disadvantage. It it was it felt like an underlying tone of respect with both teams. And it it felt that way the whole game. And it's one of those that you sit back, you're like, I would like to see a seven game series between these two. Yeah. Solid hits. Not nothing you were throwing your hands up and like, what is that guy doing? Like Nikita yeah. Zadorov is a part of it somewhere in there. So right? that tells yeah. you how incredible that was. And Ian Cole. Ian Cole, yeah. Nikita Zadorov, and it was a relatively clean game. Yeah, yeah. There, there was one moment where I don't remember who it was, uh, like jumped on the back of, I think it was Josh Manson. It was, it was Josh Manson. I'm like, all right, if we're just going to play games of piggyback, uh, if that's yeah. the worst that we can do, I think this game's going okay. Um, Want to talk about... Alexander Georgiev, before I get to uh, the, the main problem I had with this game, but he was, I, I thought this was one of his better games of the year. And, you know, he gives up the early goal. Okay. Well, I think we're kind of used to that for now, but really, really like I, he, he kind of knew he needed to match Demko. He knew that he he could not let in, you know, I love a lot of people anoint him as for as his, you know, nickname. He knew that could not happen for this team to win because you're going up against one of the best in the league and he needed to match him. 
And he did. And there were some moments there. I mean, there were some, some moments where, where Puck was, was loose right in front of him. And he, like, he, it was, he couldn't reach out to stop it. And he gets thrown on his backside. And the puck just pops out to whoever that was that takes a slap shot that goes wide. And he's on his back trying to, he's sitting on his butt, trying, you know, he's got the, the glove up, trying to make a, a stop from that angle which is just he was just flailing but in a good way it seemed like a controlled flail if that makes yeah. any sense um but I, over aside from that i thought he was i thought he was good he was really good and you're gonna be when you, you only give up one goal against this team yeah that was something i brought up yesterday with was his inability to let up less than three goals a game and he goes out there against the Vancouver Canucks and lets up one against Thatcher Demko. So that was incredible. And I think the Avalanche defense from now on, as soon as the game starts, puck drops, defense just moves out of the way and just lets that first goal go in off your gift because it was one shot, uh, one goal on four shots. Get that mm -hmm. out of the way. He cleaned up, tightened up. There were some of those where he had tracking problems, but there was some saves that he had were just remarkable and incredible. So He's he's starting to show those signs of he could steal a game. And honestly, if you want to look at it that way, he did. He did steal the game in many regards. He kept it close. Rijo had to bail them out. He got the game winner. And mm -hmm. I honestly think Yorgiev had something to do. He partially stole this game. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. So, uh, all right. Let's get our last break in here, and then uh, the 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 bad that continues to be the bad for the Avalanche. Uh, if you listen to us, if you're an everyday, or you probably know where we're going with this, so uh, we'll get to that. We have our subtext people and our sound check, and we'll get to all of that next. All right, let's hear from eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. It's what spring it is what brings home the winning trophy, and it's also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and so much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, which we call the Nathan McKinnon Trilogy, eBay Motors has got you covered. And with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts that you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home the win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. And eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. So, yeah, like uh, what was not perfect, uh, it was very good. But the one thing that just continues to be the 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 part of the Avalanche game where it just makes me smack my forehead is zone exits from the defensive end. I give Vancouver credit here. This is not just the Avalanche being completely inept and not being able to do it on their own. Um, Vancouver did a very good job forcing some of these turnovers. Uh, but some of them were self-inflicted by the Avalanche. Bad passes um, and blind passes and just passes that go a little bit too far and, and out of reach and but still don't go out of the zone. It is a problem. And yeah, I know a lot of people say, like, oh, once we get to the playoffs, you know, is, is Georgiev going to be the liability? Is Johansson going to be the liability? Is the lack of depth scoring going to be the liability? To me, it's something like that, Kyle. You do that in the playoffs, and you don't stand a chance. And and it's it's odd because the Habs have have playmakers. They have good puck movers, and it's not so much. It's it's the passing. It it it's just not there. It's not crisp. The, we know the Avalanche like we we've seen it in the past where they it, they're just like an oiled machine, and they just know where guys are. And they can make kind of just blind passes, and they know exactly where a guy's going to be. It's not working right now, and it's scaring the crap out of me, Kyle. Well, I, it was scaring the crap out of me for the first period and a half. And there mm -hmm. was a moment towards the end of the second 
where uh, like all their they tried to exit the zone and it would die around the blue line and vancouver would keep it in and they would cycle around and they kept trying to push it out rinse wash repeat but there was a moment where mika rantanen received the puck and just stopped and instead of advancing just kind of waited and slowed mm-hmm. it down and you could see arturi lekin turn to him and look and like skate back with him and realize oh yeah let's try resetting Let's try this mm-hmm. one more time. Mm-hmm. And then you could see the team just kind of advance. And then from there, you saw that little bit of extra extra thought. There was a lot less blind passing the deeper it went. It, it started cleaning up a little bit. I, I think that was honestly one of those moments where everybody's like, oh, yeah, this does still work. So we'll see if this still keeps on going to the Detroit game. If this is something they realize and remember, oh, yeah, we don't have to constantly go, 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 and I know where he's going to be, so I'm just going to pass it there anyway. You, I, it was worrying me until that moment. And again, like we talked about with Raijo and your gift, we're going to keep an eye on this going forward. But I did see some signs of where this might start changing. But this Avalanche team is very good at proving me wrong. Yeah. So definitely something to, to to watch because, like I said, playoffs, you, you can't do that stuff. You can't, and it's been a problem for most of the season for the Avs. So you have a good team like Vancouver that knows how to forecheck and does it very well. It, it's it's a problem for the Avalanche. So uh, we'll see. All right, over on subtext, uh, a couple people weighing in on this game. This is from uh, Kyle Steele. Rijo looked great tonight. Six of his 13 points are in just three games. I did not know that. That's pretty crazy. Uh, We need to learn how to bottle that production. Totally agree with you there, Kyle. He's a seasonal employee. (laughs) Um, We got Vargar here. Uh, That was a potential Western Conference final matchup, and the Abs came away with the victory. It may not have looked pretty, but Georgiev played one of his best games of the season, and Roger with his two goals, definitely Twilight Zone stuff. So he follows on Twitter, obviously. Uh, He does, yeah. He's our boy. These performances aren't typical of what uh, those two have provided all season. I hope McFarlane isn't fooled into thinking the 2C position and goaltending are just fine. He needs to make a trade or have Joe do it because I'm definitely doubting C-Mac as a GM. Don't doubt C-Mac as a GM. He, he, Chris McFarlane is not as responsible for what the Avalanche did in, in those seasons, you know, before he was officially GM when he was a GM, but he is, he was, he, he had a big role to play in even the Stanley cup winning team. So I get why there's some iffiness there with him. Let him do his job. And then after the season is over, you can go back and, and kind of reflect on it. But I I don't do that right now. That's that's a disservice to him. Me Usually me, Vargar and myself, we are very harmonized with the opinions. And he said not to get too excited. You know, this is actually with Yorgiev and Raijo's performance. This is expected. If you go back to the beginning of the year, looking at what this roster is going to be like, this mm-hmm. was the production we expected out of them. Yes, it's not typical, and thank God it's not. Maybe we get more expected production out of Yorgiev and Raijo like this. This is what we've been asking for all year. I don't want mm-hmm. typical Raijo and Yorgiev. I want expected. So I, mm-hmm. I... It's not so much of a bad thing. And maybe this is something you could build off of. If it's one good game, then yes, revisit this at the trade deadline. And I get what he's saying about, oh, I hope, you know, Chris McFarland's not just like, you know, doing the the Chewbacca and just putting his hands behind his head now because these two had a, a, a good game in the same game. It doesn't work that way. I, I, I don't think he's thinking that. I, he's taking everything in over the course of a whole season. And this, and yeah, th- this is part of it this game but it is one game over the course of the 50 plus that you've already played this year so ask tomas tatar how does one good game get you yeah right yeah exactly good point uh electrician ziggy two things one after letting in what should have been a relatively easy save your give really turned it up which ties back in to what we were saying in the past where he has to let in an easy uh, one easy goal before he settles in uh the first few shots of the game seem to be his kryptonite 
and two with 27.6 seconds until max streak would have ended they managed to pull it off better late than never yep. your gf is hulk hogan he had to hulk up and <laughs> this was i mean it, yeah. it's to be expected it's just we know how it is <laughs> and uh madam battle axe i don't know about you guys but uh <laughs> her you know what uh tightened up and got her blood pressure uh just got one heck of a workout what a great game i'm sure raijo is doing a jig all of excitement uh he is the hero of the game uh hey even a blind squirrel gets a night sometimes definitely your best game of the season hands down uh game great saves super proud of him sammy g lekin and makar taves raijo all were stars tonight this is what we needed loved it uh and she says the same thing i was getting worried with 26 seconds left uh, mckinnon finally gets the point uh but the Jokic magic came through yeah so they showed him a lot in the uh the altitude and, broadcast and they should loving, loving that he was there so uh two mvps in the building hey hey all right um all right let's get to our sound check and then wrap things up here so Kyle and i pick a song each that we feel best summarizes the most recent game put these songs up on a playlist over on spotify and you can follow along with this playlist. Just search for LOA Soundcheck, volume number three. So what do you got for this one, sir? What was this game? What was the theme night? It, it, was, uh, it was your boys tonight. It, it was a, a Grateful Dead theme night for you. Sometimes the light is all shining on me. Other times I could barely see. Lately, it occurs to me what a long, strange trip it's been. Mm. The Avalanche are trucking, baby. Yes. Well, I mean, in this game, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they, they got two in a row, so let's... This is over Vancouver. This, this is, was this is a big one, yeah. This is a this big was one. A tr this was a, a beautiful 60-minute performance. Like Vargar said, a potential Western Conference final. Mm -hmm. the Avalanche were trucking. Yeah, I think um, I, I don't know. I really wonder what the consensus was, even within Avalanche circles, of, of how much confidence people had in them for this yep. game. Because, you know, the, the road trip was not that far long ago. Um, the, the win you did have at home was against Arizona. And yes, while you, you know, they give you a good game, it is Arizona who is struggling. This was your your first real test since that that road trip. And I think there's a, there were a lot of people there that were feeling like, I don't know if the Avalanche can, can do this right now. So I think this was a, a very good solid win to, to kind of remind people like the Avalanche can win. They, they can, they can win games. They're, they're at the top of the standings for a reason. Like I think people forget that from time to time uh, when you have a run, like they did people kind of like, Oh, I guess they're done. Nope. They're not done. And we talked about all the factors around the Vancouver Canucks coming into this matchup yesterday, and they're still sitting on top of the Pacific. So, yeah. So, kind of where I'm going with this, and and I, I maybe tipped my hand a little bit over on uh, Twitter uh, after Ryan Ryan Johansson's first goal. Uh, so, like we said, he gets to your give plays well. It it was like the Twilight Zone out there. So that's why I'm going with. If there is a song that Someone to say to me, like, ask me the question, like, what, what's the song that like sums up the 80s? Mm. Like, like, what's the song like the, the 80s sound? What, what, what sums up the 80s? I think one of the songs I would put up there is Nothing's Gonna Stop Us Now by Starship. Nice. It's such a cheesy song by today's standards, but it was at the time just you loved it. Absolutely loved it. And with all of this stuff happening in this game, like I said, the two goals by Rijo. Yorgiev just playing out of his mind, standing on his head. We haven't been able to use that phrase yep. in, in regards to Yorgiev in a while. Um, you get the feeling that nothing is going to stop them now. So there you go. Starship. Love it. Bring it on. I love yeah. that pick. Yeah, Great pick. So good. So good. All right. That's going to wrap it up for today, everybody. We will be back tomorrow. Disco probably have some morning leftovers with this one for sure. And anything else that's going on in Avalanche Nation, we'll talk about it 
tomorrow. But for today, thank you for making this your first listen of the day. That is always appreciated. And uh, yeah, definitely follow us on our social media outlets and sign up for subtext. He is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. I am Chris Maselli. This is the Locked On Avalanche Podcast. We'll see you guys tomorrow.